everybody, Chris here from Project Option, and in this video we're going to talk about historical volatility and we're going to look at whether or not it is useful to options traders. So we're going to do that by looking at a 10-year study and we're going to look at trade entries based on the relationship between implied volatility and historical volatility. And we're going to see if these different trade entries lead to more or less profitable trades in the end. So most options traders focus primarily on implied volatility because it is a forward-looking indicator. That is, option prices express the market's expected movement for a stock in the future. So if option prices are more expensive on a stock, then that, that expresses a larger expected move for that stock in the future relative to a stock that has much cheaper option prices. Now, some traders like to also look at historical volatility, which is the annualized standard deviation of a stock's past returns. So all you do is you take the standard deviation of a stock's past returns, usually over the past 20 trading days or so since that's one month, and you take the standard deviation of those, those returns and multiply it by the square root of 252, which gives you an annualized standard deviation based on the stock's past price movements. So for example, let's say you have the daily returns of a stock over the past 20 trading days or one month. Let's say the standard deviation of those daily returns is 2%. To get the 20 day historical volatility or the one month historical volatility, we can take that 2% figure, multiply it by the square root of 252, since there are 252 trading days in a year, and we get 31.7%. So that 31.7% is our 20-day or one-month historical volatility. Now that number doesn't really tell us a lot in itself other than this stock is pretty volatile. So we actually have to compare this to implied volatility to see if the option prices are currently more, ex more expensive or less expensive compared to the stock's recent price movements. So why look at historical volatility? Well, historical volatility can help traders understand a stock's recent price movements which can then be compared to the expected price movements or the implied volatility of the stock in the future. So for example, let's say we have a stock that's trading with 20% implied volatility and let's say that stock's recent price movements have generated a 20-day historical volatility of 10%. So the standard deviation, the annualized standard deviation of the stock's past price movements come out to 10% while the options are implying a 20% move over the next year. In this case, the options could be a good sale because the options are implying a 20% move, but the stock's recent price movements are only as volatile as 10% when annualized. On the other hand, let's say we have a stock with 15% implied volatility, but the stock's recent price movements come out to an annualized volatility of 25%. So in this case, the options could be a good buy because the options are priced at a 15% volatility over the next year, but the stock's recent movements have been at a 25% volatility. So in this scenario, you might want to own some options. Now obviously, these aren't perfect examples because a stock's volatility can actually change, and depending on the strategy you use, you'll always have other exposures other than volatility. So. These are just hypothetical examples which set the stage for the rest of this presentation. So let's actually go ahead and look at the S&P 500's implied volatility, or the VIX, and compare that to the 20-day historical volatility to see if we can find any normal relationship between the two. So in this graph, we're looking at the S&P 500 index on the top, and on the bottom part of this graph, we're looking at the one-month S&P 500 implied volatility or option prices as quantified by the VIX, and we're comparing that to the one-month historical volatility of the S&P 500. So in this case, over this period of time, we can see that the VIX index is trading between 10 and 12.5%, which makes sense because the one-month historical volatility of the S&P 500 is between five and seven and a half percent over most of this period. Now even though the VIX over this period is between 10 and 12 and a half percent, SPX option prices are actually still pretty expensive compared to the one month historical volatility of the S&P 500. Now that's because the one month of historical volatility is between five and seven and a half percent, but the SPX option prices are actually trading with 10 to 12 and a half percent implied volatility. So that's still pretty expensive relative to the S&P 500's movements. So for the rest of this presentation, we're going to look at 
entries based on implied volatility and its relationship with historical volatility. So most of the time, implied volatility will actually trade at a premium to the historical volatility of a stock, like we can see in this example. But sometimes historical volatility will actually be above implied volatility, in which case we may not want to sell options. So that's what we're going to actually find out right now. All right, so here is how we conducted our research. So first and foremost, we're going to look at S&P 500 ETF options, which means we're going to be looking at SPY options, and we're going to look at the time period between January 2007 to present. So right now it's April 2017. Now on every single trading day, we're going to look at the at the money straddle, and we're going to look at the expiration cycle closest to 30 days to expiration. Now if there was not an expiration cycle between 25 and 35 days to expiration, we skipped that date until there was. Now we did that because we're comparing one month implied volatility to one month historical volatility in this case. So we want to look at options with approximately one month until expiration. So we opened up that range to 25 to 35 days to expiration so that we could get more occurrences, but still stay within that one month time frame. Now we're going to be recording the data as if we had sold these straddles, so all of the profitability metrics are going to be from the short side, so if we had sold these straddles. Now once we had all of the occurrences collected, we divided all of the occurrences into the following buckets. So the first bucket is entries when the VIX was at a 50% premium to the S&P 500's or SPY's one month historical volatility. The second bucket is when the VIX index was at a 25 to 50% premium to the one month historical volatility. The third bucket is when the VIX index was at a 0 to 25% premium to the 20 day historical volatility. And the final bucket is when the VIX index was below the one month historical volatility. So we're going to compare all of the short straddles in each of these four buckets and we're going to see if we can find any patterns and see if the relationship between implied volatility and historical volatility can give us good or quote unquote bad entries. All right, so there are a lot of numbers here, so let's go ahead and work through them slowly. So first of all, on the very left hand side, we're looking at the various metrics and in the four columns on the right hand side, we're looking at the various buckets of these short straddles. So from left to right, we're looking at the most significant premium of the VIX index to the 20 day historical volatility. And all the way on the right, we have the bucket with historical volatility above the VIX index. Now, first and foremost, each bucket had a similar number of trades, which is a good thing because we can compare each bucket with some reliability between the data. So let's go ahead and skip right to the most important metric. So that's going to be the percentage of profitable trades at expiration, the median and the average expiration profit and loss in terms of the percentage of the initial straddle credit and the average percentage of profitable days. So starting with the percentage of profitable trades at expiration, we can see we have a similar number, so somewhere between 63 and 69% for the occurrences when the short straddles were entered when the VIX was above historical volatility. Now we can see that the lowest success rate was in the trades that were entered when historical volatility was above the VIX index. So that's the first interesting finding. Now perhaps the most interesting and the most important finding of this entire study is that the straddles that were sold when historical volatility was above the VIX index had the lowest levels of profitability. So when we look at the median expiration profit and loss of these short straddles, we can see that the straddles that were sold when the VIX index was above historical volatility had median expiration profits of 17%, 21%, and 34% respectively. But when we, when we look at the straddles that were sold when historical volatility was above the VIX index, those straddles had a median expiration profit of 10%. Now, if we look at the average expiration profits and losses, we can see that the straddles that were sold when the VIX was above historical volatility had expiration profits equal to 8%, 11% and 16% on average, but the straddles that were sold when historical volatility was above the VIX index had average profitability of negative 3%. Now this is incredibly interesting because the average VIX at entry for the trades that were entered when historical volatility was above the VIX index was 26. 
Now, that's much higher than the average VIX at entry for the trades that were entered when the VIX was above historical volatility. So for those first three buckets, we can see the average VIX at entry was between 18 and 21. So when you look at these results, if you just looked at selling options in a VIX environment and you just you just took a guess, you would probably guess that selling options with a VIX at 26 would be more profitable than selling options with a VIX between 18 or 21. Now that's because the option prices are more expensive when the VIX is at 26. But interestingly, we found the opposite. So the most profitable trades in this study were the ones with a lower VIX at entry, but when the VIX was at a premium to historical volatility. So the last metric is the average percent of profitable days, but there really wasn't any notable difference in all of the four buckets. So the main takeaway from this is that the trades that were sold, the options that were sold, when historical volatility was above the VIX were the least profitable and had the lowest rate of success. All right, so let's quickly recap the main concepts from this video. So first and foremost, some traders prefer to only look at implied volatility as it is a forward-looking indicator, while some like to analyze implied volatility and historical volatility together. Now based on our preliminary analysis, 30-day SPY short straddles that were entered when the S&P's implied volatility exceeded the one-month historical volatility outperformed trades in which the 20-day or one-month historical volatility exceeded the current implied volatility. So in other words, the straddles that we sold when the VIX was above historical volatility we did better than the trades that we sold when historical volatility was above the implied volatility. So that's a very interesting finding. Now the findings suggest that premium sellers may benefit from selling options when the implied volatility exceeds the 20-day historical volatility. Now that's because those options are trading at higher prices than the stock's recent price action would suggest. Now lastly, premium buyers may benefit from buying options when the 20-day historical volatility is at a level that is greater than the current implied volatility. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please go ahead and click that circle on the left hand side to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get all of our videos that are just like this in the future. Now if you want to check out some more of our videos, click on the video link on the right hand side and if you want to visit our website, go ahead and visit projectoption.com.